Okay, welcome to our intermediate flow today. Um, this is our 9 a.m. Um, second level of what we started on Monday. My name is Dr. Marina Mangano, and this is going to be a combination of a little bit of vinyasa style of flowing sequential yoga, as well as my own personal kind of rehab chiropractic cues um, within postures and positions. So you don't really need anything for today. Um, obviously have a clear space where you can extend a little bit past either your area or the mat. Um, I do have blocks. Uh, I always recommend them just in case you have a little bit of discomfort or feel like you can't fully get into a true depth of a posture. Um, but we are going to begin. And I'm going to have everybody just going to start in a seated posture today. So kind of work your way into what you view as your even position. Then close the eyes down. And just start to pay attention to your breath. As you're breathing, notice if your shoulders are rising with your air, if the ribs are evenly expanding from left to right. See if you can breathe towards the back body, meaning allowing the back of your posterior ribs to expand a little bit. And then around the high part of your waist, the lower part of your ribs, can you allow those low ribs to gap and open as you take a breath in and then relax as you exhale in a canister, 360 degrees. And then even lower, see if your breath can fill up low around the belly, filling up the pant line as you inhale, you feel pressure against the clothes. And then as you exhale, a release and pressure. Continue breathing and exploring, especially in this low area. It's an area where we tend to clench, hold ourselves thin and narrow. We don't allow the muscles the opportunity to have relaxed, control of breath. Keep going. And beautiful. So a lot of that breath is really focused on our horizontal placement, but let's think about vertical breathing for just a moment. So as you inhale, imagine all of your lungs are expanding, pushing the diaphragm and the organs down so that there's pressure through the pelvic floor, almost as if you could reach towards the floor with your breath. And as you exhale, use that contraction, potentially a Kegel, to push up the air back out all the way through your, your air passage. So just say a few of those vertical up and down breaths for a moment. integrate and add some movement. As you inhale, lift both hands up over the head. Exhale, hands to heart. Keep going. Inhale. Exhale. Just follow your own pace with this. Feel free to add some playful side-to-side -side movements at the pace of your breath. And take a moment to just set a small intention for this practice, this morning, this day. A little bit of a why, your focus, your goals. Let's all come together one last time. Big breath in. Exhale, hands to heart. Lean forward a little bit so that your sitting bones are flicking backwards. Your front body is activating, lifting you up and forward. Tuck the chin lightly, let the back of the crown of the head get very tall. Beautiful. 
Beautiful. Inhale, hands up overhead. Exhale, right hand behind the body. Left hand's going to come and attach the back of the knee. So you're going to give yourself a little bit of a bind here. And try not to curl forward. Use the fingertips, tent the tips, to stand upright so that your hips stay evenly placed on the ground. Take a breath in. As you exhale, then see if you have a little bit extra range to turn. Last breath here. Inhale, slowly come back all the way up to center. Exhale, opposite side. Binding on the outside of that knee, tensing the back fingertips, pressing into the knee without rotating at the hips. Keep the hips square. Tailbone down, crown of the head tall, breath in. Exhale, rotate. Breath in. Exhale, twist. Last time, as deep as you can on your exhale. Good. Inhale, hands up overhead. Drop the left hand behind you. Take your opposite elbow. You just give yourself a little bit of, of back bend. So, so it's allowing your stern to come forward and the back of the head presses into the palm that's extending down your spine. The breath is forward. The breath is buoyant and lifting. Maintain that bind on your left elbow and go ahead and rotate towards it, keeping that right hip heavy. Slowly unbind, unwind, shake the arms out for just a moment. Interlace the fingers, press the palms forward, and just going to rotate one wrist up at a time. Being prepared for a little bit more of a weight-bearing posture that we're going to get into soon. Maybe flipping a little bit. Whatever feels good, just to open up the wrists and the carpal bones. I'm going to switch sides. Breath in, both hands overhead. This time, the right elbow is going to bend. Grab that elbow. Try not to arch forward with the head. Push back on the arms so that your chin is in a neutral line, parallel to the floor. Long posture from the tailbone all the way up the spine to the back of the crown. Allowing that expansive breath to fill up the lower ribcage. Allow it to gap open on your inhale and collapse on the exhale. As you inhale, rotate towards the left. See if you can use the opposite hip to push you a little bit. Excuse me, the right. <laughs> Last big breath in here, super tall posture. And slowly unbind, unwind, and shake the shoulders out. Just taking a nice anchor in the hands. I'm going to roll the neck a little bit. Be cautious as you go backwards. Maybe just staying, if you have neck injury or neck pain, just staying from ear forward to ear and allowing the upper traps to loosen. Um, I taught a little bit of what's called a PIR in my class on Monday, which means it fatigues the muscles to allow them to stretch better. So if you haven't seen that, um, go ahead back and check out that beginner's level class because that's going to give you a lot of ideas how to loosen the neck up for practice. Beautiful. We're going to get moving a little bit. So, turning long ways on the mat if you're not already, find yourself into a tabletop position. So, tabletop is hands are going to be right under the shoulder, knees are right under the hips. You can either tuck the toes, or we're going to go into a little bit of an arch stretch. So, by tucking the toes, reach back and even get the pinky toe, that fifth toe, caught on the mat, and then start to walk your hands back so that you're sitting on the heels. If this is uncomfortable for you, if you have any knee injuries, roll up a towel or a blanket and put it in between the hamstrings and the calf. It'll keep you more upright, but you can still put your weight backwards to stretch the arches. And this feels really good if you're wearing a lot of compressed tight shoes, maybe some heels. Or even just uh, summer season, flip-flops, our toes have to constantly grip to keep the shoe on our foot. 
uh, and it's not a normal position for our, our arches. So let's open them up, get them ready for a lot of balance and information. Maybe adding a little sway side to side. Since we're incorporating our shoulders into our practice today, go ahead and lift your right hand up overhead. Palm is going to face the spine once more. Left hand is going to extend behind you, palm facing backward, thumbs down. Allow that palm to reach to the back of the mat. Then bring the thumb close to your spine and see if you can turn the fingers up to find your opposite hand. This is a great time to have a belt or a strap, something that allows you to stay open. If you're dying on the arches, go ahead and get off the feet. If you can handle a little bit longer, inhale, cat-cow positions, look up, arch the belly. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, curl. Inhale, arch look up. Exhale, round to the shoulders, the pelvis, the tailbone. Feel the arches lift you off the ground a little bit. Beautiful. Leaning forward, release the feet for just a moment. Maybe kind of sway side to side. There, shake them out. We're going to try one more time for our opposite shoulder. If you're over the arch stretch, you can just go to the tops of the feet. This time, left hand's coming up behind the head, palm facing down the spine. Right hand extends out to your side, thumb down. Allow the hand to reach backward into space, and then the thumb travels up the spine first. You may have to do a little bit of maneuvering to get your height here. As long as you're not arching forward, keep the ears back in the line, and inhale, let the sternum and the belly fall forward as you look up. Exhale, curl the tailbone, tuck the chin. Inhale, up all the way up. Exhale, curl. This shoulder may feel different to you. It's not just a shoulder movement, it's a whole functional chain here, but the shoulder is really indicative of what the hip flexors and the pelvis can do. So that's why we try to incorporate as many parts of the body as once in one yoga position, with the whole body moving together. Good, slowly release that bind. Shake the shoulders out. Lean forward back to our tabletop position. We're gonna get off the knees. Shake the feet out for just one moment. Good, drop into child's pose. So knees go wide, palms extend forward, sit back on the hips. Again, if you're having a little bit of pinching um, through the knees, continue to give yourself a little bit of height. If you're feeling now more of a hip pinch, Try to roll the tissue near your hip crease. Roll the tissue outward and then again lay over your hips. And we'll come back to this pose at the end of class so you can feel a little bit of comparison. Deep belly breaths. Try to breathe down low towards the mat. Okay, as we inhale, roll up to tabletop position, bring the knees back underneath the hips, and walk them backward about a hand width distance. If you're uncomfortable on the kneecaps, start to pick your feet up so you're above and you're resting on your thigh bone. With our hands a little bit more in front of you, again underneath the shoulders, we're going to create a little bit of a plank here, a modified plank. So shoulder blades are down the back, let the crown of the head get tall away from the sacrum, pointing through the toes to activate the front body, and make sure the belly is not dropping towards the ground. So allow the rib cage to come back into alignment. Strong breaths. Good. If this is a little bit uh, too easy for you, you can tuck the toes underneath and go up into a full plank position. Just because you drop the legs does not mean compromise the shoulders. Push through the hands so the gully between the shoulder blades lifts towards the ceiling. Gaze is right past the hands. Good. Two more breaths. Beautiful. Shift your weight a little bit forward. Chaturanga all the way down. Elbows bend back towards the side. Always feel free to drop the knees if you need to. Come to the top of the feet. Pull the shoulder blades down the back. 
Extend the head and lift those shoulders and the chest off the mat a little bit. Breathing tall. So allow your body to get long with your inhale. Exhale, fall. Bring the hands a little bit closer towards the ears now. Inhale to cobra pose. Head extends only after the belly button has lifted off the mat. Exhale, fall. Inhale, flatten that. Then when the belly button clears, look up. Exhale, fall. Last time, push the tops of the feet. As you exhale, we're dropping into Sphinx Pose. Sphinx Pose is on your forearms, pushing through the hands, helping your spine get really tall. And there's a subtle traction that happens when you pull your forearms back toward you. The sternum wants to shift forward through towards the fingertips opening the back body into extension. If you're having a pinching through the low back, make sure you're still pressing through the feet and the elbows to give you height. Excellent. Bring the hands closer back underneath the shoulders, tuck the toes, modified or regular plank, pushing all the way up. Four, three, two, one, breath in here. Exhale, bend the knees, send the hips back, downward facing dog, whatever variation you're feeling this morning. Maybe walk the feet out so they're hip width distance. Deep bend the knees, this allows my spine to be straight. If you try to press the heels down but then arch through the top, that's really defeating the purpose of the pose. So bend the knees, let the hips go really far back, strong hands. Every fingertip has full weight on it. Good. Add some playful movement here now so you don't have to be so robotic. Whatever things you feel, maybe shaking out the neck, maybe shaking out one heel, pedaling the toes at a time, or dropping the knees side to side. Make sure the ankles go with them if you do. At any time throughout class today, if your arms are getting tired, Go ahead down and drop down into a child's pose or that stretching shoulder arch position we did today. Finding a little bit more stationary balance in your down dog with pressure on the left foot. Inhale your right leg back behind you. Peek back, make sure the toes are pointing down. And if your right glute is higher than your left glute, go ahead and square the hips to the ground. And then pull the right heel an inch closer to your body. So you're getting rid of the hip height. Four, three, two, one. Go ahead, drop the right foot. Look forward, roll, inhale to plank. Drop the knees if you need to. Exhale, chaturanga. Flip the feet, inhale, cobra. And exhale, fall to sphinx pose. Dropping the palms down, pushing through the elbows, giving the shoulders a break. Tops of the feet are helping you lift. Looking over the right shoulder, going to bend the heel towards the ceiling and just pump the ankle a little bit. Switch sides, left shoulder, look. Left heel pumps and points. Maybe some round circles. You feel that nice stretch to the front of your neck. Beautiful. Bring the hands back underneath the shoulders. Tuck the toes. Modify the regular plank. Inhale. Exhale, down dog. Inhale your left heel towards the ceiling this time. Peek underneath, toes pointing down. My hip was just doing way too much. Pull that left glute so it's the same height as your right glute. And then bring the left heel an inch closer. So you can see one heel is close to the door. And then I suck it in close to the spine to stabilize my pelvis. Lift an inch higher for three, two, one. Big breath in as you drop your feet. Roll forward to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Flip the feet upward facing dog. 
or cobra. Exhale to sphinx pose. Last time, we'll take a little bit of a break here. So pushing through the elbows, lift through. Make sure we're not building too much tension in the neck during those transitions. Relax the jaw, maybe a little bit of lion's breath here. So breath in, lion's breath is a loud, audible, <sighs> letting the tongue come out of the mouth, relaxing the jaw. Breath in, exhale, <sighs> one more time. <sighs> Beautiful, it's a really powerful pose. Bring the hands underneath, tuck the toes, press through modified or traditional plank, back to downward facing dog. Catch your breath for just a second, maybe swing side to side, already feeling a difference in between the legs here. Look forward as you breath in, exhale, walk all the way to the front of the mat, into your forward fold. So as you're dropping into forward fold, try not to sit too far behind the heels. Bring your weight forward, holding the elbow side to side. Rotating it up however you need to. Then release the hands, drop the hands down to the mat. We're just gonna practice shifting forward and putting a little bit of weight on the hands. So it almost feels like you're going to fall forward, but you have to trust catching yourself. So we inhale, stationary. Exhale, shift forward, press through the hands and lift the heels just a little bit. Inhale, back down, catch your balance. Exhale, shift forward, push through the hands and the shoulder blades, lift the pelvic floor and the tailbone, and take a break. Last time, inhale, look forward, press and shift. Those are preparing us to strengthen for future inversions. Exhale, drop. Bend the knees deeply. Inhale to chair pose. Sitting the hips back, arms overhead or at heart center. Three breaths in chair. So in chair pose, you can play around with your weight distribution. How does it feel to sit back on the heels so you can wiggle the toes? How does it feel to shake the hips? Do a little bit of a cat-cow so you understand where neutral can be in between those two. Maybe shifting your weight forward, feeling a little bit of pressure through the balls of the arch so you can lift the heels. All these little cues are just going to teach you then when you're in your own practice, where you want to put pressure and focus to activate and get the most out of these poses. Inhale, hands to the heart. Exhale, right elbow twist to left knee. So rotating into a standing twist. Make sure that right knee doesn't come too far forward. Pull back into alignment. Inhale, hands overhead, chair pose. Exhale, opposite side, left elbow goes to your right knee. This time, your left elbow, or your left knee, excuse me, usually goes too far forward. Pull it back into space, hips high. Beautiful. Inhale, back to chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Hit the hips all the way up towards the ceiling. Drop the head as low as you can go. Slowly inhale, halfway lift, flat back, seven shape. Exhale, bend the knees. That's all we're doing. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, bend the knees. Teaching us a hip hinge posture. Inhale, flat, shift forward. Exhale, shift back, bend the knees. This time with the hands. Inhale, flat back, extend the hands forward. Exhale, hands come behind you as you bend the knees. Inhale, shoot forward. Exhale, bend the knees. Last time, inhale, push forward. This time, bend the knees, push the hands behind. Can you get a little bit of air? Lifting the heels. Let's try that one more time with height. So inhale, flat back, hands forward. Exhale, airplane arms, get a little bit of air. Holding for three, two, 
one, leave the feet in the air, come up to chair pose slowly. Breath in, exhale, twist left hand behind you. Slow, controlled, inhale back to chair pose. Exhale, right arm twist. We are feeling those lower legs. Inhale, chair pose. Drop the heels, forward fold. Oh, take a break. At any time throughout class, since I'm not there, get modified with you. Please grab a drink, take a break as you need to. Make this a realistic practice so you feel called to create your own routine at home and you want to keep up with it. All right, slowly, one bone at a time, rolling all the way up to stand. Inhale, hands overhead, mountain pose. Exhale, hands to heart. Let the brain catch up for just a moment. Close the eyes down, let your breath catch up. And really pay attention to how you're standing here. Where's your weight balance on your feet? Feel the difference between shifting really far to the left, to really far to the right, pretty far backward and forward. And can you find that sweet spot kind of in between all four of those corners? We'll look into a little bit of a balance sequence for this part of class. Um, and as I teach balance, I really want you to focus on the feet because that's the foundation giving your brain constant information about where you are in space. So um, one of those main cues that I'll always talk to is called tenting or, or arching. Um, and it doesn't mean curling your toes. Instead of curling the toes, it's leaving the toes relaxed and curling the arch. So getting a higher arch as if you're pulling the balls closer to your heels. So when you're standing in this even posture, look down at your feet and see if you can pay attention to the ball of the first toe, the fifth toe, and the heel. That three-prong arch is going to be really important for our balance. So go ahead and try to activate those three areas up and in towards the center of your feet. Maintain that arch, but bend the knees a little bit. Go into like a chair pose, but really focusing on that arch. Good, shift your weight over to the left foot. Maintain that arch lift, but see if your right foot can hover. A lot of extra movement and extra activation. If you cramp up, shake it out. Let's switch sides. As you put your right foot back down, go ahead immediately into that tenting arch, shifting your weight and then lifting your left knee. Good, dropping back to our chair pose. Inhale, both hands overhead, straighten your legs. Exhale, hands come to your hips, shift over to the left, lift your right knee up in the air as you breathe in. If you immediately want to hike a hip, see if you can drop that right hip down so you're closer to the ground. Flexing the toes, breath in, kick straight forward. Exhale, bend. Inhale, kick. Exhale, bend. One more time, inhale, kick forward. As you exhale, pull that hand into, uh, grab the foot and bring the inside of your thigh above or below the knee for tree pose. So this is a balanced posture that we have, I think has a lot to do with this, this flying leg, but it really is more important to focus on the stance leg. So with that left hip, try not to let it jet out to the side, push through the inner arch, allow the whole body to upright and lift, and you'll feel your left leg push back into the tree pose bind. Open your hands to whatever expression feels nice to you. Hands up overhead. Looking up overhead with your eyes closed will actually be the hardest. But we're not looking for that today. We're looking for connected, intentional, mindful movement. Bring hands back to heart. Good reach down. Let that leg kind of shake out for a second. And we're going to switch sides. So, same uh, opposite position. Um, on the right arch, tent those three areas as you shift to the right. Hands on the hips, you can tell what your alien bones are doing. Lifting your uh, left knee up towards the ceiling. 
If your left hip's too high now, go ahead and drop it down and make sure the opposite hip is in jutting out. Good. Breath in as you kick and extend the legs forward, toes point, uh, hold. Exhale, bend. Inhale, kick. Exhale, bend. Inhale, kick. Exhale, bend. Last time, inhale, kick. Exhale, reach through, grab to help yourself into tree pose. Again, above the thigh or below the knee, not on the inside of the knee. And when you're doing this, try to imagine if you're putting your palms forward as if you're pressing open the hips and using that to lift open through the front body as the right inner arch activates and lifts you up so that hip isn't collapsing out. Finding a little bit of comfort. Exhale, bring the hands to the heart. Drop the feet down, fall to forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, go through a vinyasa. So drop the feet back, high to low plank. Elbows come through chaturanga. Flip the feet, inhale or upward facing dog. Exhale, press back, down dog. And stay in your down dog for a second. I just want you to watch that transition. As you're coming up into down dog, you're on the tops of your feet in a really strong plank. Don't flip the feet until you're in this neutral plank. So a lot of people start to back bend here and flip the feet, putting way too much pressure on the low back. As you're coming up, strong tops of the feet plank, once you're in it, then flip and release into down dog, protecting the spine and allowing you to maintain a safe practice for as long as you want. Good. Inhale, right heel towards the ceiling, look forward. Exhale, step through in between the hands. Inhale, open up crescent pose. So crescent pose is when both feet are facing forward, parallel to the sides of your mat. Let the hips come forward as you press the back knee straight towards the ceiling. Inhale, look up. Exhale, elbows come to side, fist of fire. Add that lion's breath. Inhale, look up. Exhale, lions. If you want to bend the knees a little bit. Slow it down, inhale, straighten the legs. Exhale, bend the knee, lean your left elbow to the right knee, twisting to the right. If you feel like you're collapsing a little bit in that front hip, make sure you have a square enough foundation. So if your feet are kind of train tracked in front of each other, walk the right foot out a little bit and try your twist again. If you feel unstable, you can always put a hand down to block or mat. Release the hands, come back up, crescent pose. And then open it to warrior two. So back foot is now parallel to the back of the mat. Lean into the front leg, hands are extended, shoulder blades are back. And toes are relaxed. They're not, they're not active, they're just not curled and grabbing the ground. Allow that tenting of the arch to do that for you. Go ahead, cartwheel the hands, go all the way down through another vinyasa. So this is a chance to practice your safe transition. High to low plank. Flip the feet, inhale, upward dog or cobra. Safe plank as you exhale back, then flip the feet, downward facing dog. Switching sides, inhale, left heel towards the ceiling. Look forward, exhale, step through as you rise to crescent pose. Big breath in. 
Exhale, bend the knees and the elbows. Let out the air. The last one. Slow it down. Inhale, straighten the legs. Exhale, hands to the heart. Bend the knee, right elbow twist to your left knee. And as you rotate, if that right knee starts to collapse in, press through the balls of the back foot to lift you and shift forward a little bit. And then remember, you have that nice square foundation. If you had to walk your front foot out a little bit, give you that opportunity for some hip space. Ideally, eventually we're trying to look up towards the ceiling with the thumbs at the sternum, but one step at a time. Slowly inhale back up to crescent pose. Exhale, open into warrior two, opposite side. Right foot now at the back of the mat. Release any tension you're building through the shoulders. To help with that process, actually, let's go. Inhale, straighten the arms and the legs. Exhale, bend the knees. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. So yoga, there's no rules. It doesn't need to be super robotic. It doesn't need to be very pretty and dynamic. It is whatever feels right to you. And that may change day to day. Let's find a little stationary posture for just a second. Strong arches. Collective breath in. Exhale, cartwheel the hands down. Go through your vinyasa. High to low plank. Meeting in child's pose, grabbing a drink of water. Meeting back in downward facing dog. Go ahead and just pedal out the feet a little bit. Good. And I, I, last class I alluded to that we were going to work on a little bit on our kick throughs, which are really important because in a lot of times in class you don't have the opportunity to go back and practice something that didn't feel right. So even though I'm not in front of you, face to face, we're going to practice kick throughs for just a second. So as your right foot is back up in the air, look forward and oftentimes you understand that you have to create space. So I see a lot of people rounding up and scrunching their neck and then there's really nowhere to go except down. So something I'll have you try instead is try to stay low, so bend your left knee. And that's going to let the sternum drop into a deep hip hinge. Bend the elbows, and as you stay low, then lift the hip and kick. Like if you're kicking a kickstand at that last second. So try that a couple times. Bend the knees, bend the elbows, kickstand. Bend the knees, bend the elbows, kickstand. Give that shot on both sides. The only thing, uh, the only other thing you can't really see because I'm facing the wrong way is as you come forward, make sure you're not rolling out on the hands. So oftentimes as you kick through, we try to create space and roll out. Puts a lot of pressure on the wrist and puts the shoulder in a weird rotation. So let that motion come from the front body, the hip flexor, and keep the palm grounded. All right, so let's actually work into this now. So left foot plants, right foot up towards the ceiling, breath in. Bend the knees, bend the elbows, kick through, exhale. Inhale, rise, crescent pose. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, shift forward. Exhale, bring the opposite arm forward as well. So we're leaning, oh, kind of like it's a side ankle posture, but both hands are shooting forward. Maybe drop the hand to the the knee if you need a little bit of support. And then go into side angle posture. So hand comes down either shin, block, or mat. Arm extends towards the ceiling looking up. Maintain that tight arch on both feet, pressing you, kind of pressing away as if they're trying to rip the center of the mat. The feet are trashing outward. 
slowly dropping the hips back away from your head and coming into a triangle pose. If your knee feels like it's hyperextending, you don't have enough pressure on the feet. So push to the feet, maybe it lifts your torso an inch away from the mat and allow the rib cage to rotate through towards the front. And that rotation comes from the outside of your hand pressing on the inside of the ankle. Inhale, look down. Exhale, bend the knee, cartwheel go through a vinyasa. Safe plank, down dog, last side. Inhale, left heel towards the ceiling. Bend the knees, bend the elbows, exhale, kickstand through. Slowly rise, crescent pose, breath in. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, lean forward. Exhale, opposite arm comes to meet that arm. And as your hands go forward, your hips actually shift further backward into a hip hinge. Practice opening the sternum towards the front, the long side of your mat. Drop the hand to the elbow if you need to. Make sure the toes are relaxed but the feet are active and drop into side angle. So hand comes down, palm face the long side of your mat and look up towards the ceiling. Working into triangle pose, allow the hips to shift backwards. Try not to move your head. Just the hips are moving as that front leg will happen to straighten. And again, if you have too much pressure in the knee, see where you can add some support to your body. So I'm going to push my hand into my inside of my arms, and that's going to lift me up about an inch. Also allows me to rotate the sternum. And there's just this perfect spot where you open up where you can feel that back leg now has a good grip on the mat and has most of your weight. Inhale, look down. Exhale, cartwheel the hands. Go through a vinyasa flow. So if you missed Monday's class, um, vinyasa just and, and how I'm using it just means transition. It means high plank to low plank, some kind of extension, cobra or up dog, and then pressing back into some kind of flexion, whether that's um, a downward facing dog or a child's pose. So let's all meet in child's pose for just a few breaths to catch our breath. Maybe grab some water. as we start to work our way back down to the mat. So when you're ready, we're gonna flip over out of child's pose and into this sitting posture, just this upright posture for a moment. Allowing the ankles to kind of open up. I'm practicing a little bit of a boat position. So boat is a supine core posture. And this V that we're creating just by sitting here, sitting upright, is the V that we're looking for once you're in the air. Like this. What happens is often we kind of round here and we use our neck muscles and our hip muscles to kind of pull us forward. So go back on the ground. Lift your whole front body up as if you were zipping up your jeans. Just kept going, zipping up a coat all the way up, closing the hood. And you can feel how lift by lifting yourself forward, you're also using your the front of your quads to kind of meet that back. Also, what do you feel on your feet as you're trying to lift forward? Can you create that tenting of the arches? And then if your knees are opening out to the side, try to bring them back into at least hip width distance. Four, three, two, 
One, holding behind the knees, just to walk your feet back. We're gonna go into a little bit of an actual boat pose. If you need to maintain um, pressure here, that's great. Just keep working on closing this into that upright V. Hands can be forward, hands can be extended all the way up. Maybe legs kicking forward or the full extension of our pose. I'm gonna stay here today because I know I'm cheating. Breath for three, two, one. Inhale, extend as much as you can. Exhale, slowly lower all the way down to the mat. Shake the hips out, maybe some windshield wipers from side to side. And then pressing through, walk your shoulder blades in towards the spine. Walk your feet at hip width distance, feet facing forward nice and relaxed, palms face down. Go ahead and lift up into a little bit of a bridge posture. So in bridge, the back of the neck is calm because we're using our arms and our heels to lift us. The breath is buoyant and tall. Drop the hips. Bring your right ankle to your left knee. And you can either go into um, a, a supine pigeon pose here or drop the whole foot and figure four over to the ground for a spinal twist as long as the right shoulder blade stays on the mat. Slowly coming back to the center, dropping the feet, switching sides. Make sure the shoulder blades are still in the center of your, as close to your spine as possible as the left ankle comes to the right knee. And supine pigeon behind the hamstring or letting the whole thing fall over to the side. As long as the left shoulder blade maintains contact with the ground, you can turn and add rotation to the neck. that back to neutral and just a few moments to go ahead and complete your practice with whatever position feels good to you that we didn't get to today um, there's an endless endless uh, sequence of poses so if you need shoulder stand happy baby um, supine bound angle just play around a little bit as long as you have as little as effort as possible this is the calming portion of class more breaths in whatever position you're finding. And then making your way to a final resting posture. So whether that is corpse pose where you're just laying flat into Shavasana. Um, some people like a supported corpse pose or putting, moving over to the wall so that your glutes are up against the wall and your feet are in the air. It's a really great posture to lay there for about 10 to 15 minutes a day if you suffer from any um, cardiovascular issues. Um, it just really allows the lymph in your body to drain back towards the core and to be processed faster. Uh, so if you have a little bit more time, I recommend at least that 10 minutes of legs up the wall. It feels amazing. So 
So wherever you find yourself, go ahead, relax into your resting posture. Close the eyes down. And just doing a little bit of an attention scan. So without opening your eyes, just visualizing around your face and your head. Are you clenching through the jaw? Can you relax the facial features? Move down over the neck and shoulders. See if you're holding on to any tiny muscles there. As you mentally scan over the torso, can you tell if your chest is maybe able to expand a little easier than at the beginning of class? Can you feel more connected to space breathing into the belly? Allow that scan to go down over the hips. Make sure you're not clenching through the glutes. Allow your feet to fall out to the side if you are. Thinking your powerful legs for all that they do for us. Relaxing the muscles all the way down to the feet. Easy hands. And just kind of swirling your attention from head to toe. Once you make those micro scans, it's easier to jump into big picture scans. Scan with breath. Breath as an anchor to stay here, stay focused. Everything else can wait a few more minutes. Thanking your body for all its abilities to adapt, to communicate with you, let you know when it's out of balance, when something is suffering from dis-ease. Make a silent affirmation or promise to your body to try to pay a little bit more attention to those signs. But don't always communicate something is wrong with your body physically. I'm just asking for a little bit more of a conversation. An acknowledgement of the triggers in your life. teaches us to respect the balance within our own body and the balance of how our body adapts to the world around us. Having a practice like this a couple times a week or every day gives you that open door to communicate and to witness how quickly we can get out of whack and how quickly we are in charge of coming back to a healthy, easy baseline. Follow your breath. slowly start to reintegrate back into the world. Just pulling your attention back to the body. 
You'll be making a mental scan of this outline, the outside of your body. Witness how much space you're taking up on your mat, your area. Is that your true space? Or have you been limiting how much space you can take up? Or overinflating how much space you need? Remind your body how safe you are with mindful movement, with communication, and ask it to return to what you believe is your true space. slowly start to add some tiny movements just to seal all those movement patterns that we learned today. Wiggling the fingers and the toes. Waking up the brain's awareness. And maybe rubbing the palms. Sending a lot of sensation to the brain. Being grateful for the many, many things our hands do for us every day. Wiggling the wrists and the ankles. Maybe you're rotating the head from side to side. If you're on your back, stretching your hands up overhead as your feet extend long, big breath in. And then exhale, bring everything into chest. Hug your knees into chest. A little bit of rocking from side to side. And slowly rolling your way up to an easy seat. And once you're in seat, we're just going to gently add some tiny movements. Rolling the neck like we did at the beginning of class. Rolling the shoulders. And just breathing through the chest and the belly in that horizontal kind of 3D hamster mode. And then that vertical breath. See if you can breathe down, push against your pelvic floor at the same time as getting tall and buoyant. And then exhale, bring all that air energy back towards your core. One more time, vertical breath, inhale. Exhale, coming back. Pull hands to heart center, touch the thumbs to the sternum as a reminder of where your center is, kind of your reset point when things get to be too much. Inhale, both hands overhead. Exhale, pull all your nutrients, all your resources back to that reset button. Last time as we seal class, inhale, overhead. Exhale, close. Thank you so much for being here, either live or hopefully get to rewatch this class later today. Um, I'm very grateful to be back in my hometown teaching to everybody, and the gift of social media is that we can still connect wherever you are. Um, so we're going to be doing another 9 a.m. 60-minute class this Friday online, and it's going to be a little bit more advanced. So similar pace as what we did today, just some stronger holds, maybe a little bit more challenging yoga postures. Um, please reach out with any questions. Have a great rest of your day. Namaste.